Well, Dave, it's your birthday. It's Bill Dundee's birthday. And you'll always remember that October 24th was the day that Khabib Nurmagomedov retired I from know. mixed martial arts after his big win, his dominant destruction of Justin Gaethje in the main event of this UFC 254 show. 134 of the second round via triangle choke. Just destroyed this dude. He seemed to get that triangle choke on way too easy. Like he mounted the guy and he just had it on. It was like... Well, this I, guy is one of the greatest fighters there's ever been on the history of this planet. Yeah, I'm mean, pound for pound. He's one of the greatest fighters there's ever been. He's a, he's a, he's he's incredible. Because I mean, like, it's it's hard to say. Okay, George St. Pierre had more time and and fought more top guys as did John Jones, um, and that that so that would put them ahead in some ways. But Khabib, like. Like George St. Pierre lost twice. John Jones never really lost. He's got a loss, but it was a DQ loss. But John Jones had a couple of fights that were pretty damn close. I mean, like three of them. And Khabib's never had a close one. Um, but Khabib didn't stay as long either. Um, you know, and that makes a difference too. So, um, yeah. I was Well, here's what happened, everybody. So they go in there for the first round, and dominant round for Khabib. You, did you know the two of the three judges gave the first round to uh, Gaethje? And I, I, I'm, I'm like flabbergasted, because I thought that Khabib clearly won the first round. I thought that he had a very dominant first round. I mean, so I, I mean, don't know Gaeth, what fight Gaeth, they were watching. I Gaeth, mean, he was me- chasing him around the octagon. Gaeth, Gaethje was literally running from him at points. Gaethje was, Gaethje was running away. I know. How do you give that round to, to Gaethje? And it not was- only that, he's running around the whole time. And then Khabib takes him down with 40 seconds left. He passes his guard. He mounts him. He's going for an arm bar when the horn sounds. How do you give that round to Gaethje? I have no idea. I was like, you know, when the show was over, I left because uh, it's my birthday and I went out and I came back, you know, just a little while ago. And I saw these people talking about like two of the three judges gave you the first round. I go like, I paid real close attention to this show. And there is like no way that Khabib didn't. I mean, he won that first round easily. I mean, and and then just took him, you know, I mean, yeah, he, he took he took some leg kicks. I mean, without a doubt, he right? took a few leg kicks, but I mean, he had one speed which was fast, and he had one direction which was forward, and he just dominated this guy. And I mean, forget everything else; he took him down, he mounted him, and he was arm barring him when the round ended. I mean, come on! I, I thought I, I thought that he was about ten seconds away from beating him when the round ended. Well, he was a little more than ten seconds because the second round starts, and they went a minute thirty-four. But basically. Gaith G hit a yeah, leg kick. Yeah, but he kick. didn't. He, did, he didn't open. He didn't open with the armbar. No. I mean, if he had, if he would, if the second round would have opened and he would have been ready in that armbar position, that guy wouldn't have lasted a minute or anything, or, or more than a couple seconds. Well, Khabib took him down to the second. He got his back. He transitioned to mount. He went for a mounted triangle. Got turned over, and he just finished the triangle from his back. And Gaith G tapped. The referee didn't see it, so he went out. And there is your winner, Cubby. He fell to his knees. He starts well, that, weeping. That, that, I, when I saw him tap and the referee not seeing it, it was like, I thought, Jesus Christ, like Ghetto's like distracting the referee. And I've seen this 50 times in the last month. It was so yeah, well, annoying. This one, this one was legit. So he falls to his knees. He's crying. John Anik goes over there to interview him, but he will not be interviewed until he cuts the tape off of his gloves so that he can take his gloves off. And John Anik saw this. And boy, he knew something was up. Yeah. And Khabib says, God gave me everything. I want to thank my father, who passed away earlier this year. All which of is my why, which team. Is, which, is, which is why he retired. Today, I want to say this was my last fight. No way I'm going to come here without my father. Says when UFC called about Justin, he talked to his mother for three days. She did not want him to fight without his father, but he promised it would be his last fight. He gave his word, and he was going to keep it. He said the one thing he wants from UFC is they need to name him the number one pound-for-pound fighter in the world because he deserves it. He says, I was 13-0 in the UFC, 29-0 in my career. I think I deserve it. He thanked Lorenzo, Dana, Joe Silva for signing him. Thank Justin. And then he said, take care of your parents, Justin. I know you're a great man. Someday they'll be gone, and you never know what might happen tomorrow. Laid his gloves in the ring. And listen, retirements... 
99 times out of 100 are bullshit, but he promised his mother that he was never going to fight again after this fight. I yeah, find it hard to believe that he's going to go back on his word to his mother, especially because of the love he has for his father. Yeah. I thought that like if anybody else would have said that, I would have said, yeah. You know, a lot of people say right after a fight that they're retiring and they're not, and they almost never do. But I thought in this case, uh, he's probably retiring. And it was interesting because I thought the one thing – that UFC could do to get him out of retirement for one last fight was George St. Pierre, because I know he's talked about, he's talked for a while about wanting to retire at 30 and 0 and have a fight with George St. Pierre. And they probably could still do that. But George St. Pierre said that he would, um, and, and they were, you know, Dana said that he was looking at making the fight. Um, and George St. Pierre said, I'm not going to ask for that fight. Of course, you know, it could, I suppose, I mean, I think, that if that fight were to happen, I think he would do it. And, you know, just because of the magnitude of the fight, and it would be like the last fight of both of their careers. And it would just be, you know, it'd just be something. But I don't think we're going to see it. But um, now they got to figure out what to do with the uh, lightweight title. I guess maybe, um, I don't know, you got Gaethje, you got um, the, you know, they could go with the Conor McGregor uh, Dustin Poirier fight. And, and say that the winner of that fight is the champion. Um, and then have Tony Ferguson, uh, probably get a shot at the winner of that and, or, or, or Gaethje. So, um, I mean, there's plenty of lightweights in there that, that, um, you know, would be out there. But yeah, it was really sad. You know, it was kind of a very emotional moment. It was a very dominant fight. I mean, he looked great. He looked fantastic. I mean, he left champion. It's sad the way that it had to go. It's tragic. Well, as soon as the fight was over and he started crying, it reminded me of when uh, Miyu Yamamoto fought right after uh, Kid Yamamoto died. And like she goes in there and she's stoic, and then she went in there, and then as soon as the fight was, they had an incredible ring entrance, like one of the great ring entrances of all time. And then um, she won her fight, and then she just started crying uncontrollably. Like she's just been, you know, like she... She was already in training for the fight when Kid died, so she went through with it. Um, but um, this was this was somewhat similar, you know. And um, I'm sure that if his father was still alive, this would not have been his last fight. And I can see that, you know. You know, the other thing reminded me of this was is um, Ronda Rousey when she was um, like very very young. Her father would take, you know, she she was um, a swimmer and she was. You know, an age group champion swimmer. She's a super athlete. She probably would have been good in, in many different sports. You know, judo ended up being the one that she excelled in, but she was a really good swimmer. And then, and her father would take her swimming. And then when her father died, she never swam again, you know, and it was just like, that's what I did with my father. And she never swam again. And then she, she ended up in judo uh, a couple of years later, maybe not even a couple of years, but, um, but she would never go back to swimming. And, uh, that's what it reminded me of when he said that. It's like, this is what he did with his father. And, uh, you know, it, he didn't want to do it anymore. Um, it's, it's, you know, again, for someone who was so good at what he did, you know, he's, he's an interesting character. He's, you know, the thing is, one of the things about this is like, you know, so, so many times when like Conor McGregor says it or, so many other guys and you know it's just total bullshit um the one thing is is that they're all motivated by money you know like henry cejudo you know i'm retiring and it's like it's you know he's motivated by money if the right offer comes of course he's going to fight um khabib is not motivated by money um i don't know him personally but i you know i have mutual friends or you know mutual partners or whatever training partners or whatever it is but that's the one thing that they, he, it's like he's made money. Um, he's made a lot of money. And it's just not like he's had offers to do things that would compromise principles for incredible amounts of money, like, like mind boggling amounts of money. Um, and had, I mean, it's not even he, he, he turned it down. It's like he had no interest in it because it's just like, 
you know, I got enough money. I don't need to compromise principles for whatever. This is, this is non UFC offers. Um, you know, like, uh, to do like a boxing match in, in, uh, Abu, um, in Saudi Arabia, you know, which was, you know, and, 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 you know, you know, would get more money than Vince gets for a show. I mean, that's the kind of money that we're talking about, like ridiculous money. And it's just like, you know, it's not the right thing. And, and, you know, so it's like that he, he's just not that guy. Um, and I think that, um, you know, I, 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 you know, my, my gut is, is that he's not going to fight again. Um, you never know. Um, I, it's, it's just hard for me to believe just as an athlete, if the St. Pierre fight were to, uh, that that would be the ch one challenge I think he would take because it would be such a, uh, a legendary matchup. It would be such a spectacle. It would be that one thing, you know, and again, going against someone that he, you know, was one of his kind of idols and everything. Um, and, and it would, you know, I mean, I think that that would be really cool. I don't, I don't expect it to happen, but, um, you know, that it's, it's just, it's hard for me to believe that that, that's the one thing it's hard for me to believe that he would turn down would be a fight with George St. Pierre. I don't know if George wants to do that. I mean, George still trains and George, George like says when he trains, he, he thinks he could do it. But then when it comes down to the whole everything, it's like, you know, George's mentality is, is like, I'm definitely not going to fight after I'm 40 and he's about to turn 40 and it's just, um, you know, a time, time running out and, you know, and, and, but maybe for Khabib, you know, I could see George getting motivated maybe for Khabib to do that fight. Um, I don't, I don't know that he would want to fight anyone else, but, uh, yeah, what a, that was not the twist of that I expected from the show. Um, you know, I, I did, I did think there was a real good chance that he was going to fight this fight you know, and one more, you know, whether it would be Connor Ferguson um, or George. And at that point, I thought there was a pretty good chance he would retire. But I guess he promised his mom that he was retiring after this fight.